Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. Right here in the Haven uh, with my loyal Brahmachari assistant, Abhayadas Brahmachari, and Radharaman who's staying here, whose flat he, he owns the flat. By his mercy we're staying here. And Rasika Shirmani who has hit the ground running and is like a sage in the top of a mountain, uh, listening constantly to the Chaitanya Charitamrita and editing the sound in preparation for releasing the BBT official audiobook of this CC. Uh, hopefully we'll get it out by Gorpurnim or as soon as we can. Uh, I'm very sorry I wasn't with you last night at kind of an emergency phone call came up and I had to, I had to deal with it right away. Uh, providence, circumstantial. Uh, but I'm very, very happy to be back with you and again uh, basking in the rays of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes with you. Okay, um, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur <clears throat> He prays the Chaitanya Charitamrita in this wonderful poetic uh, uh, text or discussion. He said, In due course, Mahapralaya, devastating floods, will inundate the entire universe. If you, try to, if you attempt to survive by swimming in that deluge, then do not neglect to take hold of Sri Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Or if you cannot hold all three, then release Bhagavad Gita. If necessary, you may also relinqu relinquish Srimad Bhagavatam. But under no circumstances, release your hold on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. For if this one book remains, then the flood can do no actual damage, because after it has subsided, the message of Shastra can be revived from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita alone, it being the essence of all Shastra. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda So we've reached the 18th chapter of the Madhya Lila. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is relishing thousand times more than he's relished the holy name and the pastimes of Krishna while touring Brajadam. Boma Vrindavan. The Vrindavan. Sometimes it's described the Vrindavan forests of Vrindavan, and sometimes Vrindavan is one of the forests, of the twelve forests of uh, Rajamandala. So now, he's, he's, there were some people who mistook uh, the fishermen in the Kali Arada, the lake, Kali Lake in the Jamuna and the light was there was a fisherman fisher, fishing at night in the middle of this in the Jamuna and the people saw the light of the of the fisherman and thought that this was the jewels on the hoods of Kalia and and thought that the, that the uh, fisherman was Krishna so they've been running around and Lord Chaitanya's sitting there and Krura and Krura uh, got and watching these people make fools of themselves and then Balabhadracharya, Balabhadra Bhattacharya who was his servant asked him if he could go see Krishna and he slapped him out of affection and said to wake him up he said what are you doing Krishna doesn't appear in, in Kali Yuga he appears in Dwapara at the end of the Dwapara Yuga and then uh, 
some gentlemen came there and they revealed that actually it was just a fisherman, it wasn't Krishna dancing on the hoods of Kaliya in the Yamuna. And then they said, but we, we have seen Krishna we, in, in seeing you because you're a sannyasi and sannyasis are not different from Narayana. And then Lord Chaitanya has just finished uh, explaining to them why that was wrong, uh, explaining to him the difference between uh, Krishna consciousness and Mayavad philosophy. And now uh, we're moving on with his pastimes. Text 128, 127, sorry. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then bestowed his causeless mercy upon all the people there and everyone became ecstatic with love of God. Finally, they all returned to their homes. 128 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained for some days in Akrura Tirtha. He delivered everyone there simply by distributing the holy name of Krishna and ecstatic love for the Lord. 29, 129. The Brahmana disciple of Madhavendra Puri went from house to house in Mathura and inspired other Brahmanas to invite Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to their homes. Text 130. Thus, all the respectable people of Mathura, headed by the Brahmanas, came to Balabhadra Bhattacharya and extended invitations to the Lord. In one day, ten or twenty invitations were received, but Balabhadra Bhattacharya would only accept would accept only one of them. 132. Since not everyone got an opportunity to offer invitations to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally, those who did not requested the Sanodiya Brahmana to ask the Lord to accept their invitations. 133. The Brahmanas from different places, such as Kanyakubja in South India, who were strict followers of the Vedic religion, offered invitations to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with great humility. Text 134 In the morning, they would come to a Kruru Tirtha and cook food. After offering it to the Shalagram Shila, they offered it to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Purport There are Brahmanas known as Pancha Goda Brahmanas who come from five places in northern India. And there, are, and there are Brahmanas known as Pancha Dakshinatya Brahmanas who come from five places in southern India. In northern India the places are Kanyakubja, Saraswata, Gauda, Maitil, Maitila and Utkala. In southern India the places are Andhra, Karnataka, Gujarat, Dravida and Maharashtra. The Brahmanas from these places are considered to be very strict followers of the Vedic principles and they are accepted as pure Brahmanas. They strictly observe Vedic principles and are not polluted by tantric misdeeds. All of these Brahmanas respectfully invited Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for lunch. Text 135 One day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat at the bathing ghat of Akrura Tirtha and thought the following thoughts. Purport Akrura Tirtha is located on the road between Vrindavan and Mathura. When Krishna and Balaram were, were being taken to Mathura by Akrura, the Lord rested at this place and took his bath in the Yamuna. When Krishna and Balaram took their baths, Akrura saw the entire world of Vaikuntha within the water. The inhabitants of Vrindavan also saw the Vaikuntha planets within the water. Text 136 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu thought, At this bathing place, Akrura saw Vaikuntha, the spiritual world, and all the inhabitants of Braja, 
saw Goloka Vrindavan. 137. While considering how a crewer remained within the water, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately jumped in and stayed under the water for some time. 138. When Krishna Das saw that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was drowning, he cried and shouted very loudly. Balabhadra Bhattacharya immediately came and pulled the Lord out. Text 139. After this, Balabhadra Bhattacharya took the Sanodhya Brahmana to a secluded place and consulted with him. 140. Balabhadra Bhattacharya said, Since I was present today, it was possible for me to pull the Lord up. But if he starts to drown at Vrindavan, who will help him? 141. Now there is a crowd of people here, and these invitations are causing much disturbance. In addition, the Lord is always ecstatic and emotional. I do not find the situation here very good. Text 142 It would be good if we could get Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu out of Vrindavan. That is my final conclusion. 143 the Sanodhya Brahmana said, Let us take him to Prayag and go along the banks of the Ganges. It will be very pleasurable to go that way. 144. After going to the holy place named Sorok Chetra and bathing in the Ganges, let us take Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that way and go. Text 145. It is now the beginning of the month of Magh. If we go to Prayag at this time, we shall have an opportunity to bathe for a few days during Makara Sankranti. Purport Bathing during the month of Magh at the Magh Mela still takes place. It is a very old, this is a very old Mela assembly dating from time immemorial. <clears throat> it is said that ever since the Lord in the form of Mohini took a bucket of nectar and kept it at Prayag, holy men have gathered there every year and observed the Magh Mela. Every twelfth year there is a Kumbha Mela, a great festival, and all the holy men from all over India assemble there. The Brahmana wanted to take advantage of the Magh Mela and bathe there. Bathing at the confluence of the Ganges and Yamuna, near the fort at Allahabad, Prayag, is mentioned in the revealed scriptures. If one goes to Prayag and bathes at the confluence of the Ganges and Yamuna in the month of Magh, he attains the result of giving hundreds and thousands of cows in charity. Simply by bathing for three days there, he attains the results of such a pious activity. Because of this, the Sanodhya Brahmana was very eager to go to Prayag and bathe. Generally, karmis, fruity laborers, take advantage of bathing there during the month of Magh, thinking that they will be rewarded in the future. Those who are situated in devotional service do not very strictly follow this karma kandiya process. Text 146 The Sanodhya Brahmana continued, Kindly submit to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the unhappiness you are feeling within yourself. Then propose that we all go to Prayag on the full moon day of the month of Magh. Text 147 Tell the Lord of the happiness you will feel in traveling via the banks of the Ganges. Balabhata Bhattacharya therefore submitted this prayer to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 148. Balabhata Bhattacharya told the Lord, I can no longer tolerate the disturbance of the crowd. People are coming one after another to offer invitations. 149. Early in the morning, 
people come here and not seeing you present, they simply tax my brain. 150. I will be very happy if we all leave and take the path by the banks of the Ganges. Then we can have the opportunity of bathing in the Ganges at Prayag during Makara Sankranti. Purport. There are two great occasions for bathing in the Ganges during Magmela. One is on the day of the dark moon and the other is on the day of the full moon during the month of Mag. Text 151 my mind, has be- my mind has become very much agitated. I cannot bear this anxiety. Now everything rests on the permission of your Lordship. I will accept whatever you want to do. <clears throat> 152 <clears throat> Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had no desire to leave Vrindavan, he began to speak sweet words just to fulfill the desire of his devotee. 153 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, You have brought me here to show me Vrindavan. I am very much indebted to you and I shall not be able to repay this debt. 154. Whatever you desire, I must do. Whatever, wherever you take me, I shall go. This is the relationship that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has with his devotees, with his pure devotees, simple-hearted devotees. He's controlled by them. He only wants them to be happy. 155. The next morning, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got up early. After taking his bath, he became ecstatic with love, knowing that he now had to leave Vrindavan. Text 156. Although the Lord did not exhibit any external symptoms, his mind was filled with ecstatic love. At that time, Balabhadra Bhattacharya said, Let us go to Mahavan, Gokula. 157. Saying this, Balabhadra Bhattacharya made Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sit aboard a boat. After they crossed the river, he took the Lord with him. 158. Both Rajaputta Krishtadas and the son of the Abramana knew the path along the Ganges very well. <clears throat> 159. While walking, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understood that the others were fatigued, took them all beneath a tree, and sat down. While walking, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, understanding that the others were fatigued, took them all beneath a tree, and sat down. 160. There were many cows grazing near that tree, and the Lord was very pleased to see them. 161. Suddenly a cowherd boy blew on his flute and immediately the Lord was struck with ecstatic love. 162. Filled with ecstatic love, the Lord fell to the ground unconscious. He foamed about the mouth and his breathing stopped. While the Lord was unconscious, ten cavalry soldiers belonging to the Muslim Patan military order, rode up and dismounted. 164. Seeing the Lord unconscious, the soldiers thought, this sannyasi must have possessed a large quantity of gold. These four rogues here must have taken away that sannyasi's riches after killing him by making him drink, by making him take the poison Dutura. 166. Thinking this, the Patan soldiers arrested the four persons and decided to kill them. Because of this, the two Bengalis began to tremble. Purport. The four persons were Balabhata Bhattacharya, his assistant Brahmana, Rajputta Krishnadas, and the Sanudiya Brahmana devotee of Madhavendra Puri. 
167. The devotee Krishna Das, who belonged to the Rajaputa race, was very fearless. Isanodiya Brahmana was also fearless, and he spoke very bravely. The Brahmana said, You Patan soldiers are all under the protection of your king. Let us go to your commander and get his decision. 169. This sannyasi is my spiritual master, and I am from Mathura. I am a Brahmana, and I know many people who are in service to the Muslim king. 170. This sannyasi sometimes falls unconscious due to the influence of a disease. Please sit down here, and you will see that he will very soon regain consciousness in his normal condition. Text 171. Sit down here for a while and keep us all under arrest. When the sannyasi regains his senses, you can question him. Then, if you like, you can kill us all. <laughs> Text 172. The Patan soldier said, You are all rogues. One of you belongs to the western lands, one to the district of Mathura, and the other two, who were trembling, belong to Bengal. Text 173. Rajputta Krishna does said, I have my home here, and I also have about 200 Turkish soldiers and about 100 cannons. Text 174. If I call loudly, they will immediately come to kill you and plunder your horses and saddles. 175. The Bengali pilgrims are not rogues. You are rogues for you want to kill the pilgrims and plunder them. 176. Upon hearing this challenge, the Patan soldiers became hesitant. Then suddenly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu regained consciousness. 177. Coming to his senses, the Lord very loudly began chanting the holy name, Hari, Hari. The Lord raised his arms upward and began to dance in ecstatic love. When the Lord shouted very loudly in ecstatic love, it appeared to the Muslim soldiers that their hearts were struck by thunderbolts. 179. Seized by fear, all the Patan soldiers immediately released the four persons. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not see his personal associates arrested. Text 180. At that time, Balavadabhattacharya went to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and made him sit down. Seeing the Muslim soldiers, the Lord regained his normal senses. All the Muslim soldiers then came before the Lord, worshipped his lotus feet, and said, Here are four rogues. 182. These rogues have made you take datura, dutura, Having made you mad, they have taken all your possessions. 183. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, These are not rogues. They are my associates. Being a sannyasi beggar, I do not possess anything. 184. Due to epilepsy, I sometimes fall unconscious. Out of their mercy, these four men maintain me. 185. Among the Muslims was a grave person who was wearing a black dress. People called him a saintly person. 186. The heart of that saintly person softened upon seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wanted to talk to him and establish impersonal Brahman on the basis of his own scripture, the Quran. 187. When that person tried to establish the impersonal Brahman conception of the Absolute Truth on the basis of the Quran, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu refuted his argument. 188. Whatever arguments he put forward, the Lord refuted them all. Finally, the person became stunned and could not speak. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. 189. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, 
the Koran is certainly establishes impersonalism, but at the end it refutes that impersonalism and establishes the personal God. 190. The Quran accepts the fact that ultimately there is only one God. He is full of opulence and his bodily complexion is blackish. Purport. The revealed scripture to, of the Muslims is the Quran. There is one Muslim Sampradaya known as the Sufis. The Sufis accept impersonalism, believing in the oneness of the living entity with the absolute truth. Their supreme slogan is Analahak. The Sufi Sampradaya was certainly derived from Shankaracharya's impersonalists. Text 191. According to the Quran, the Lord has a supreme, blissful, transcendental body. He is the absolute truth, the all pervading, omniscient, and eternal being. He is the origin of everything. 192. Creation, maintenance, and dissolution come from Him. He is the original shelter of all gross and subtle cosmic manifestations. 193. The Lord is the supreme truth, worshipable by everyone. He is the cause of all causes. By engaging in His devotional service, the living entity is relieved from material existence. 194. No conditioned soul can get out of material bondage without serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Love at His lotus feet is the ultimate goal of life. Purport. According to the Muslim scripture, without ibadat, offering prayers at the mosque or elsewhere five times daily, Namaz, one cannot be successful in life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pointed out that in the revealed scripture of the Muslims, love of Godhead is the ultimate goal. Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga are certainly described in the Quran, but ultimately the Quran states that the ultimate goal is the offering of prayers to the Supreme Person, Evadhat. 195. The happiness of liberation, whereby one merges into the Lord's existence, cannot even be compared to a fragment of the transcendental bliss obtained by, the, by service unto the Lord's lotus feet. 196. In the Quran, there are descriptions of fruitive activity, speculative knowledge, mystic yoga, and union with the Supreme. But ultimately, all this is refuted and the Lord's personal feature established along with His devotional service. Sounds like the Gita. Amazing. 197. The scholars of the Quran are not very advanced in knowledge. Although there are many methods prescribed, they do not know that the ultimate conclusion should be considered the most powerful. 198. Seeing your own Quran and deliberating over what is written there, what is your conclusion? 199. The saintly Muslim replied, All that you have said is true. This has certainly been written in the Quran. But our scholars can neither understand nor accept it. Text 200. Usually they describe the Lord's impersonal aspect, but they hardly know that the Lord's personal feature is worshipable. They are undoubtedly lacking this knowledge. Chaitanya Prabhu just turned them right around. Amazing. Purport. The saintly Muslim admitted that those who were supposedly conversant in the teachings of the Quran could not ultimately understand the essence of the Quran. Because of this, they accepted only the Lord's impersonal feature. Generally, they recite and explain this portion only, 
Although the transcendental body of the Lord is worshipable, most of them are unaware of this. 201. Since you are that very same Supreme Personality of God in Himself, please be merciful upon me. I am fallen and unfit. 202. I have studied the Muslim scripture very extensively, but from it I cannot conclusively decide what the ultimate goal of life is or how I can approach it. 203. Now that I have seen you, my tongue is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The false prestige I felt from being a learned scholar is now gone. 201, 204. Saying this, the saintly Muslim fell at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and requested him to speak of life's ultimate goal and the process by which it could be obtained. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Please get up. You have chanted the, name, the holy name of Krishna. Therefore, the sinful reactions you have accrued for many millions of lives are now gone. Now, you are now pure. 206. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then told all the Muslims there, Chant the holy name of Krishna. Chant the holy name of Krishna. As they all began to chant, they were overwhelmed by ecstatic love. Krishna, Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly initiated the saintly Muslim by advising him to chant the holy name of Krishna. The Muslim's name was changed to Ramadas. Another Patan Muslim present there was named Vijuli Khan. Purport. After being initiated, the devotees in the Krishna consciousness movement change their names. Whenever a person in the Western world becomes interested in this Krishna consciousness movement, he is initiated by this process. In India, we are falsely accused of converting Mlechas and Yavanas to the Hindu religion. In India, there are many Mayavadi sannyasis, known as Jagat Guru, and although they have hardly visited the whole world, some are not even sufficiently educated, yet they make accusations against our movement and accuse us of destroying the principles of the Hindu religion by accepting Muslims and Yavanas as Vaishnavas. Such people are simply envious. We are not spoiling the Hindu system of religion, but are simply following in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by traveling all over the world and accepting those who are interested in understanding Krishna as Krishna Das or Ramadas. By the process of bona fide initiation, their names are changed. Text 208. <clears throat> Vijuli Khan was a very young was very young and he was the son of the king. All the other Muslims or Patans, headed by Ramadas, were his servants. 209. Vijuli Khan also fell down at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Lord placed his foot on his head. Oh, Krishna. Text 210. After bestowing his mercy upon them in this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left. All those Patan Muslims then became mendicants. 211. Later these very Patans became celebrated as the Patana Vaishnavas. They toured all over the country and chanted the glorious activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. Text 212. Vijuli Khan, then Vijuli Khan, became a greatly advanced devotee 
and his importance was celebrated at every holy place of pilgrimage. 2.13 In this way, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed his pastimes. Coming to the western part of India, he bestowed good fortune upon the Yavanas and Vlechas. Purport The word Yavana means meat-eater. Anyone from a meat-eating community is called a Yavana. One who does not strictly follow the Vedic regulative principles is called a Mlecha. These words do not refer to any particular man. Even if a person is born in a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaisha, or Shudra family, he is a Mlecha or Yavana if he does not strictly follow the regulative principles or if he eats meat. Text 214. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu next went to a holy place of pilgrimage called Soro Chetra. He took his bath in the Ganges there and started for Prayag on the path along the banks of the Ganges. 2.15 At Soro Chetra, the Lord requested the Sanodiya Brahmana and Rajaput Krishnadas to return home. But with folded hands, they began to speak as follows. 2.16 They prayed, Let us go to Prayag with you. If we do not go, where shall we again get the association of your lotus feet? 2.17 This country is mainly occupied by Muslims. At any place, someone can create a disturbance. And although your companion, Balabhadra Bhattacharya, is a learned scholar. He does not know <clears throat> how to speak the local language. 2.18 Hearing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted their proposal by smiling mildly. Thus, those two persons continued to accompany him. 2.19 Whoever got to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would feel himself overwhelmed with ecstatic love and we and would begin to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. 2.20 Whoever met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became a Vaishnava and whoever met that Vaishnava also became a Vaishnava. In this way, all the towns and villages became Vaishnavas one after the other. Text 2.21 just as the Lord inundated South India on his, on his tour there, he also inundated the western part of the country with love of Godhead. Purport According to some opinions, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited Kurukshetra while going to Prayag from Vrindavan. There is a temple of Bhadrakali in Kurukshetra, and near that temple, there is a temple containing the deity of Sri Chaitanya, Mahaprabhu. Text 222 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu finally arrived at Prayag and for ten successive days bathed in the confluence of the rivers Yamuna and Ganges during the festival of Makara Sankranti, Mag Mela. Purport Actually, the word Triveni indicates the confluence of three rivers, namely the Ganges, Yamuna, and Saraswati. Presently, the Saraswati River is not visible, but the river Ganges and the river Yamuna merge at Allahabad. <clears throat> Text 223 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's visit to Vrindavan and his activities there are unlimited. Even Lord Shesha, who has thousands of hoods, cannot reach the end of his activities. 224. What ordinary living being can describe the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? I have only indicated the general direction in the form of a summary. The pastimes and methods of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are uncommon 
Unfortunate is he who cannot believe even after hearing all these things. 226. From beginning to end, the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are uncommon. Just hear them with faith and accept them as true and correct. Text 227. Whoever argues about this is a great fool. He intentionally and personally brings a thunderbolt down upon his head. Text 228. The pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are an ocean of nectar. Even a drop of this ocean can inundate the whole world with transcendental bliss. Sri Rupa Raghunatha Padiyara Ash Chaitanya Charitamrita Kahi Krishna Das Praying to lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu following in their footsteps. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Madhyalila, 18th chapter, describing the Lord's visit to Sri Vrindavan and his conversation with the Muslim soldiers on the way to pray on. Sri Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. The ecstatic love of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. The deliverance of all the people of the West Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bol. Sri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's touring Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. So Hari Krishna. We'll stop our readings tonight uh, here and pray that you are all are having an ecstatic Kartik season with extra hearing and chanting of the glories of the Lord. We'll soon have special days. Prabhupada's disappearance day is coming up. Govardhan Puja is coming up. So Hare Krishna, if anyone has any reflections or discussion or comments, please be our guest. I don't know what I did last night without this Hare Krishna. Question from Krishna Premavati Devi Dasi. We have a, qu a question from Krishna Premavati Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Well, first, she says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend your live readings on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because of other obligations. I will listen to the recordings. Thank you so much. Um, she's asking, uh, Vajuli Khan, was he formally initiated? No change of name for him? Yes, he was formally initiated. And it's not clear whether Vajuli Khan is his initiated name or he got another name. It's not clear in the text. And I will not speculate. But because of Prabhupada's commentary, you can assume that he was initiated. Or even if he wasn't, he was chanting Hare Krishna, ecstatic love by the, by the influence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I heard Gopi Purana in that book who said a very wonderful thing. He said, actually, in the Kali Yuga, we're not really very qualified to chant Hare Krishna because it's the highest method 
of, of worshiping the Lord, not just in Kali Yuga, but in any Yuga. And usually we have to go through different processes to get to the point of being able to chant the Hare Krishna mantra purely without any offense. And um, so Gopi Pranadana Prabhu made the point that because of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu having appeared on this earth, we are all chanting Hare Krishna. In, in a sense, in essence, he initiated all of us by telling us all to chant Hare Krishna. You know, you remember, here's the, 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 the example here is that he initiated the, the saintly person that was there in the Patan, among the Patan soldiers <clears throat> by telling him to chant Hare Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya said, every, I, I order every person in this universe to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, take up Krishna consciousness. So because of that desire, because of that order, we are chanting Hare Krishna. But still, we, we must take initiation because that is the parampara system. We can't change the system. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Next is a comment and a question from Yadutama Das. Hare Krishna, Yadutama. He says, Hare Krishna, Gurudev, my obeisances to you and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Hearing about the intimate exchanges between Lord Chaitanya and his devotees, all I can think is, why would we ever want anything else? That is the proper conclusion. Congratulations. Absolutely the proper conclusion. And if you hear these things, uh, this is a very important point I'd like to stress. Uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami said just now in our reading that if you just hear these pastimes with faith and believe them, accept them as true and correct, and don't argue about it, then you will get love of God. It's that easy. But the application is not so easy. Why? Because the material energy is very, very strong. Hare Krishna. He says, Thank you so much for sharing this nectar with us. Also, this is not so much connected with tonight's reading, but I promised a brahmachari in our temple here in Ivanovo that I would ask a question for him. Mm. He has recently started a reading group on Skype for newer devotees as part of a Kartik Vrat. He noticed that when he reads without making his own comments, the devotees seem to get a little drowsy and not engaged in the reading. What are some suggestions? you can make to better hear Prabhupada's books together and keep everyone enthused and engaged? Well, it's a little difficult during the uh, reading unless, you, it's, unless it's a Zoom group and you can see them, you know, and then you can interact with them. Uh, if I have a group in the room, you know, then I direct my vision and my voice, you know, to individuals who need a little boost by my perception. And that helps keep the energy uh, intense, intense. And the only thing I can say is that I just try to read. It's not that I try to read, but I feel very enthusiastic when I read. And because of that, I think the sound keeps people interested. Because, or maybe you can discuss with them this principle, you know, that, that we're trying to hear from Srila Prabhupada directly. 
just like you know we're hearing about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how anyone who saw him became a lover of Krishna and became a Vaishnava and then anyone who saw that person when they went back to their village they would also become devotees in this way Lord Chaitanya spread you know the holy name of the Lord and increased the number of Vaishnavas everywhere he went you know in a, in a, in a in a way in a to an extent that we cannot even imagine we can't even imagine it but Prabhupada said that that potency is still there it may not be as great as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu but the potency is still there depending on our own uh, how we are accepting and yeah as true and correct these pastimes not just as stories to entertain us so I would say I, mean, I have my own conviction that I read straight through and then we have the discussions afterwards but if you have a group that is uh, sleepy not able to stay attentive then you might want to break the reading up with some questions yourself ask the questions or 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 ask them to 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 respond or whatever i i would say that's but then also teach and try to help them come to the point of hearing you know for some time before you start to discuss because i've noticed that when you start to discuss without doing that the the subject matter tends to go all over the place doubts tend to come up then they start to con converse about them and and the, the doubts increase and it just becomes a mess that's all i have to say i don't have any special you know curriculums or special mystic suggestions or powerpoint you know emojis or whatever I just depend on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu depend on Shiva Prabhupada and Krishna does the, does the magic Hare Krishna Uh, somebody from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. Hare Krishna. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Could you please tell us something about the glories of Srila Narottam Das Thakur, whose disappearance day we are observing today? Oh, I don't... You know... Uh, uh, I need to stop. I'm really sorry about this. I feel so bad. You asked me this question and now I feel very bad because I'm not saying anything about Narutam Das Thakur. Uh, but I, I can't sit in the chair very much longer and I, I don't want to just say anything. Please forgive me for that. Narutam Das Thakur Ki Jai. The disappearance of Sri Narutam Das Thakur Ki Jai. Narantam Das Thakur left this world it's his disappearance day he went into the river Keturi and he was bathed by his disciples and his body disappeared into the Keturi it's a huge subject matter and I, I, I'm without, I'm lost for words more than that because I really have to stop so you please forgive me this time please all glory to Srila Narutam Das Thakur in his disappearance day and thank you Rati for reminding me because when I'm in this this kind of convalescence mood I'm in I'm just going from one thing to another during the day and I haven't been checking the the uh, calendar so strictly so forgive me for that but but Sitala wrote a book you might have that book or you might get that book glories of uh, 
Narutam Das Thakur. I don't remember what the exact title is, but I have that book in my library in, uh, in Govardhan. Sitala, my god, my god sister Sitala, the wife of Hari Sori, she wrote a wonderful book about the, the nectar of the pastimes of Narutam Das Thakur. So I can direct you to that authorized book. She says thank you. My apologies. So I'll go now. Thank you so much. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai Sama Bhira Bhakta Brinda ki jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bos Srila Naratam Das Thakur Antirubha Maha Mahotsav ki jai Kirta Kartik Prat ki jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo See you tomorrow night same time, same station, same subject. Hare Krishna.